This is a Sax 5 speed hub gear made in Germany probably in the late 1980s. There was another component on the bike that said West Germany on it. Uh, Sax was bought by SRAM and I believe this was kept in production for a long time. I wanted to show you how to take it apart um, and hopefully you won't have the trouble that I had when putting it back together. Uh, firstly you will need a 17mm flat wrench or cone wrench I believe they're called. Um, I was unable to buy one and so I took my, I only used a 14mm side so I actually used a flat file and a Dremel tool to increase that to 17mm because you will need to take this lock nut apart. Obviously I've got it most of the way apart anyway. Take those two nuts out. Of course I've uh, taken this apart a few times and put it back together a few times so it's much cleaner. When I started this the grease on the inside was the consistency of cookie dough which is why it didn't uh, change gears. Okay, keep track of uh, what you take off and put them down in order. Having taken that off, take off the um, lever that holds the brake in position. At this point you can drop the whole thing out of the wheel. Oops, let's take this out. Bearing. Notice the balls are on uh, side facing down. <clears throat> and this little thing. Notice the uh, little two uh, folded over places are on the outward side. Take off the wheel. So as I said, this side basically has um, a uh, coaster brake. Uh, these, uh, when you uh, twist the um, sprocket backwards, this uh, gets pushed out and expands into uh, this piece, which um, expands, but we'll get to that later. So I'm going to take the nut off the other side. Now from what I can tell, uh, this side is controlling the um, sun gear in the center. It's got a two uh, sized uh, sun gear um, and it will switch between first and second gear and then fourth and fifth, third gear is a direct drive. Notice the spring which is uh, trying to push the uh, sprocket outwards. <coughs> okay, so here I've got uh, the cone. It's a bearing in there inside the sprocket. Another uh, bearing race. Again, the balls facing towards the center. Two springs, so there's an outer spring and an inner spring. Notice uh, on the one end of the spring there's a little uh, extra bit of like a metal washer. Um, this goes uh, facing inwards. I'm going to post a link to an exploded parts diagram which I found online which uh, made that direction clear. <coughs> 
Now, here's the guts of it. Let me get this apart. Okay, so this is the uh, ring gear, which is sliding off. Actually, I told this the other the wrong way around. This is the side which controls, uh, it's got, it's got three states. Uh, which is going to drive either, as I understand it's going to be driving this um, case around, or it's going to be driving the ring of the planetary gears around, or one other combination. Anyway, this, this comes out. Now, the difficult part is a small screwdriver. And take this ring off. Probably a good trick is to hold a bit of paper or something around a bit of cloth so that should the ring fly off, it'll only fly a short distance. Okay, got that off. So here we have the uh, clip ring that holds that in place. Now on the end of that is a washer. I'm going to put all those in order on the side in the order that they came out. Now one crucial thing I learned, oh now there's a spring in here. Again it's got a little metal washer on one end, in this case uh, facing outwards. And two gears, two sun gears. These uh, stay um, essentially fixed to the uh, central shaft uh, when they're engaged. Now one thing, well one thing I didn't understand at the beginning, uh, these when they're engaged there's a series of, you can see the teeth on the shaft would hold these in place so when the larger of the two sun gears is engaged the smaller one is still going around uh, because it's tied to the planetary gears on this cage. Uh, however, it has uh, no effect, it's just spinning freely on the shaft. Now similarly, when the, um, there's a spring uh, which will, uh, when this cable is uh, released, it will press inwards and the larger sun gear will spin freely and not do anything. So that's how you get two gears on this side, acting with the dual sized planetary gears. Now one thing I did not learn until today, um, which is absolutely crucial to putting this back together, these three planetary gears must be aligned correctly and somewhere on here there are three little marks, uh, timing marks, so I'm not sure if on the inside or the outside on this one. Okay, there it is. Uh, perhaps you can see on the gear, there is a little uh, hole. Now, there is a little hole on each of the three planetary gears. Um, one, two, and three. They must be in exactly the same position. I'm going to post a link to another video that I found helpful uh, and the trick they suggested was to put these right on the edge. Uh, assembly is really difficult because the spring, uh, try, as you put everything back together, the spring is going to try and push things out of position but um, when it's back in position, rotate it and make sure that the, hole, the timing holes um, disappear from view at the same time. So um, that is it for disassembly. I'll probably make a separate one when I've got it back together, uh, showing you um, how the gears are changed. Anyway, that's all for now. Okay, just to uh, recap, I've uh, with some difficulty got the ring gear back on the um, shaft and the sun gears. Now, one thing I wanted to make uh, clear once again, these timing marks on the three planetary gears need to be in exactly the same position. You'll see here I've got them aligned so that they're the furthest outwards, whatever position it is, whether you, as you move this around, obviously they go to one side. But they need to be identical, otherwise the gears are going to self-destruct. It's um, 
I believe. <clears throat> uh, so anyway, again, we've got planetary gears, uh, two sizes, and there's sun gears down the bottom, which uh, stay fixed relative to the shaft when they're locked on the uh, splines on the shaft. Uh, when everything is working properly, there will be about one, a little over one chain length movement. Actually, here it's less than that. Sometimes when you bring it out, it doesn't go all the way, and you need, since it needs a little bit of jiggling to uh, make it, um, the larger sun gear needs to, um, the grooves on the inside need to get over the splines on the shaft so it doesn't it's not as smooth as I expected I'm using Park Tool uh, bicycle grease I hope that's okay um, anyway when everything is in position we've got about one little over one chain length of movement there okay we're going to look now at uh, how we change gears uh, you remember uh, this side, which is the non-drive side where the brake uh, lever attachment is, uh, this is controlling which sun gear is engaged on the splines on the shaft. Uh, so this is going to be changing, I believe, between first and second and between fourth and fifth. Now, on the other end, uh, and so this is the um, planetary gear cage, and certainly this has not come apart. I am slightly concerned uh, at one point I was thinking of flushing all this out and asked, asked people at work if there was anyone who had an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, but then it occurred to me, uh, since I can't get this apart, I can't get grease onto the shafts for the planetary gears. Um, so I decided not to do that and just cleaned it out with a toothpick and um, paper towel uh, and then re-greased everything. Now the, uh, this is going to be the drive-in where the sprocket goes on. There's two ways uh, that the drive can be transferred. Um, this piece, which um, another video is called the clutch, can engage directly into the slots in the cage here. So it's going to be driving the uh, cage that carries the planetary gear when the clutch is pushed all the way in. Then this piece, the ring gear, which goes around the planets, uh, engages, uh, it's got teeth on the inside, and it also has some um, grooves to correspond with the teeth on the outside end of the clutch. So I'm going to slip this in place. Easier said than done. Embarrassing. Oh, easier if you do this first. Uh, and so when you pull the chain, this little uh, rod is moved along the shaft to um, uh, pull it back out and the springs uh, we'll be pushing the components back in. Uh, so there it is assembled and at this point the clutch is out and so let me just check this as a view. Yes, we're good. So when we apply the dry sprocket uh, splines on the inside uh, here, uh, sorry, um, grooves on the inside here go on the splines here. So at this point, the, actually let's do it this way. When this is all the way in, like this, it will be, remember, engaging uh, the um, cage carrying the planetary gears. I believe this is the uh, direct drive, if you will. So. When we uh, twist this, everything is going around. Well, maybe not direct drive, but in any case, uh, you can see everything moving there. Now the thing which is harder to understand, I found, when we pull this chain, the clutch thing will come out. So it's going to disengage from these pieces. 
So it's going to be resting here and spinning like this. The power then is transferred from the drive to the ring gear and we'll uh, go on to the planetary gears. So put this back. So at this point power is being transferred from the sprocket to the ring gear to the planetary gears and then that's making uh, this piece turn and the um, paws, I think they're called, these little teeth are facing outwards. Uh, these are engaging on uh, little um, bumps on the inside of the wheel to turn it. Now the bit which is a little confusing, so at this point we've, uh, sorry, the um, uh, clutch thing is no longer engaged. When this is pulled out a little bit further, as I understanding, just understand it, this is now still engaged on the planetary gears. We're not engaged on the on the cage. This is now turning, and this is turning at the same speed. But what, as I understand it, uh, this is now because we've now moved this axially. Either this is now engaged on um, bumps on the inside of the wheel or it's not. Um, so either one of these is driving. Uh, in the case where this one is driving, I think this is going faster. Let's just see how this is going. Yeah, so this one would be going faster than this one and so this would just ratchet around. And so by either moving this from here to here, you're either engaging these or these to drive the inside of the wheels. And then just to recap, if this one is engaged in here, that means you're driving the cage and not the ring. So that gives you three different gears. Now finally, one thing I want to show you this, as I mentioned, comes with a coaster brake, or a back pedal brake, as I would call it in Australia. When you twist backwards, you can see here the uh, piece, the cone-shaped thing, is being forced outwards, and the brake pads then expand, and they're going to grip on the inside of the, um, uh, inside the wheel, and that will then stop the bike. Uh, to my surprise, it seems that these are supposed to be greased. It's not, not like a brake shoe and a drum brake for a car. Uh, so these are meant to be uh, greased with some high temperature grease. Uh, this park tool grease is apparently uh, it's not high temperature grease specifically. Uh, I don't think this particular bike's going to get a huge amount of use, so I'm not too concerned. Um, but that is my understanding how all this is going to work. I am concerned about getting the adjustment right on the cables and uh, that's going to be tomorrow's exercise, trying to get those three positions right. Uh, so the springs will either, again, push that clutch onto the, um, to drive the cage or when it's pulled out somewhat, it's going to allow the uh, ring gear to uh, do the driving and pull further, uh, we'll engage these poles instead of those. So that's how it works as I understand it tomorrow, we'll put it together and uh, see if I can make it happen.